it's baked. There we go, all the little windows are greyed out. That means any changes we want to do will have to be done after freeing the bake. So now uh, let's just scrub through a bit. Here's the reason why I moved the animation along 20 frames. Let's just get in here and have a look here. So remember frame zero is the, the, the classic T stance, which is the position that the proxy jacket with its cloth sim is in uh, at the beginning of the process. And scrubbing through, you can see how much movement there is in the torso there. It drops down a fair way. The arms come down to the side. Uh, the left thigh comes forward and displaces the jacket out to the side at that point. So this is the opening um, uh, pose of the action that I want to save out. Uh, and it's just too extreme of a uh, change from the rest position here. Uh, if I change now in, a, in one lump to the start of the actual action, it's just too much of a change. The cloth sim goes berserk, so it's important to move your actual animation uh, ahead by however many frames you need to just smooth the transition. Playing through now, look at that. That's a thing of fucking beauty. Boom, bam, look. Oh, that little grey thing on the floor, by the way, is, a, is a, just a little section of floor I put there with a collision modifier on it to prevent the jacket from spilling through. But look at that, not any of the little empties are poking through the floor. But that isn't to say that the jacket on my character isn't, because let's look at the actual armature spaghetti junction. It's a pretty extreme deformation of an armature. So uh, as we can see with the mesh, it is actually falling through the floor. I'll fix that up a little bit later. That, that's, that's quite doable. But now I want to look at the effect of all of that on my actual mesh. Let's scroll out and make sure I've got a view here. And oh, me goodness, that looks good. I mean, that's almost perfect straight out of the box. Let's uh, have a look on this side. Scroll. Oh, did you see that back there? Let's just go back a few. And boom, there. A little bit of uh, shirt poking through the jacket. So let's bring up the, the jacket armature. Uh, that bone, maybe. Where's the widget? Um, if we just adjust, sometimes adjust the rotation of these bones, that's, there you go. It's solved that problem. The little flash of white has disappeared. The IKs on these things, look at the constraints. Uh, we're not copying the rotation of the uh, empty, so we're free to adjust those, or I'm free to adjust those uh, as I see fit, and a little bit of a tweak like that doesn't affect the rest of the animation of the jacket all the way through. Uh, let's see it go through again. And nothing else seems to be poking through uh, on this side anyway. And uh, you can see, now look here. See how the the thigh, the right thigh, is deforming that jacket nicely. It is just spilling out over the side of his hip and now flaring open as he uh, flies into the air and, bam, hitting the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, look at the other side. Any bits of shirt poking through? Nothing I can see there. That looks good. Uh, 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 step by step. And... No, good, nothing again. Jacket flaring out beautifully. Let's have a look at his back. Nothing there. Damn, I'm pleased with that. So uh, oh, now we've got an issue with the tie. Can you see the tie is breaking through the collar of the jacket now? So this will be an, uh, an opportunity to show uh, some of the tweaking I have to do. But first, some setup. Let's uh, select the jacket and... Um, change the draw type to wire uh, in the object panel. Do the same with the tie, pro uh, tie proxy wire so we can see through it to the underlying empties which are still pretty impossible to find. So uh, what I'm going to do, let me just get arranged here in this uh, inelegant position he's in. Here we go. I'm just going to select the five uh, tie empties. Remember, they're vertex parented to the mesh, uh, so I'm free to move those about, and that's what I'm going to do. But first of all, I have to find the damn things. 
So I'm shift selecting an empty layer for those to go on. Uh, so now if I go back to my mesh and then shift select that layer with the empties on, I have isolated the empties and my mesh. So uh, like I say, this is the same process I would use for fixing up the jacket uh, if any of the shirt was poking through. Go back to the last Good position, give it a location keyframe there. Scroll through until you have to make an adjustment. Uh, move the relevant, go and find the damn empties that you have to move uh, and move them to a position where the mesh is free of the, the jacket uh, mesh in this case. Give it another location keyframe. Uh, and I'm going to time lapse this. It's, uh, it's a pretty tedious little job. It doesn't take that long, but you just go through three or four frames at a time, like animating the toes and adjusting the positions of the empties. This is a good job for automatic keyframing though, but I tend to stay away from that bugger because it gets me in all sorts of problems. But here we are, we're getting to the end. That's it done. If I scroll through now, um, you can see the tie is looking pretty good. Um, get a clearer view of that and play it through and boom, get rid of the damn widget, where are you? Yep, and boom, and good, the tie is falling across his shoulder and down around his neck without actually uh, penetrating any of the other mesh. Cool as, now I need to just sort out this jacket uh, that's poking through the floor, so I'm going back to uh, frame one. Um, adding a shape key, basis shape key, then hitting the plus sign for uh, uh, the first of the uh, shape keys. I only need one. Uh, and now I select all of those verts that are below the level of the uh, grid floor and just move them up on this shape key. So uh, again, this is a little bit tedious. I'll just uh, go into time lapse uh, and uh, finish this off, but it's a matter of moving them up, then deselecting those that are already above the floor, then moving the rest up and uh, deselecting and, and so on until all of the um, jacket mesh is above uh, the level of the floor and that would just about be it. So here we go, if I move the value slider on the shape key uh, up to one, all of the jacket is now above the floor. There's a little bit of shirt poking through there, but uh, that's absolutely okay. We're not going to see that. That's going to be flat on the floor. There's why the shirt is poking through. That part of the armature has got quite a, uh, uh, a wiggle on it, but and like I say, that's not a problem. Uh, if that happens in a visible area, that's when you go in and, and isolate the, the relevant empty and... Um, uh, and, and move it like we did with uh, with the tie. So now I just need to animate this uh, shape key. So at about that point, it's on zero. At the end, uh, we'll give it a value of one and, and uh, I over the um, uh, the window, and that is now animated from there to there over one. Let's have a look at how it looks. I'm beginning to suspect it looks like crap. Boom, bam, look at that, it's wobbling about. Jackets don't do that when they hit the floor, wobble, wobble, wobble. So what I need to do is just uh, speed that um, shape key animation up. So let's open up the graph window, home to find the actual mesh, select that last keyframe, G, X, and move it up much closer to the uh, first keyframe so that whole transition from 0 to 1 of the shape key happens much quicker when he hits the floor, which it would anyway. So, boom, bam, and a little bit of movement because he's rocking in position. But that's it, done, uh, and almost ready to uh, uh, save out to a point cache MDD file.